guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at one of my favorite filming spot locations because guess what? We have that one new Lexus SUV and it actually falls in between their lineup quite nicely. This vehicle, this is it. This is a 2024 Lexus TX. That's the new model. This is the TX350 all wheel drive. But before we get into this midsize, this is still a midsize, three row SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Lexus, obviously that premium brand of Toyota, been around since 1989, is now increasing their SUV lineup. So let's talk about their lineup. Starts with the smallest, the UX, then it goes up to the NX, the RX, then the TX. Of course, we have that newly released, redesigned GX, and then of course, the big dog, is gonna be the LX. Now, with the TX, they basically took that three row midsize SUV philosophy and just made it a little bit bigger. In the past, you would have to get an RX 350L, which that third row was kind of a joke. So what I wanna find out is, if you're looking for a Japanese premium brand, three row SUV that's midsize, do you go with the new TX or do you go with another X, the Acura MDX? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this Matador Red TX350 and find out. Right off the bat, the style. You could see the Lexus lineage, but there are some things that are quite different. At the front of the business, love the way Lexus does their LED lighting. Massive LED turn single, daytime running lamp, and projector beam LED headlight. Working our way down, just a little bit of flat black, but we have an LED fog lamp nestled in there. I just wish they made this bottom portion functional. Or give us two LED fog lamps. But then the big change is when we come across the front end. This is called, normally you would have your spindle grill. This is called the spindle body. So now they incorporate the grill and the body together. Some aluminum style finish, functionality up top, and then you're gonna have functionality all the way down with these gloss black and gray accents, color matched body panels as well, that matador red. And then on the lower portion, you have flat black. And I like the way on this lip, they put some nice ridges in there, almost like a Ruffles potato chip. I'm actually digging that. It just gives it a nice little extra bit of style. You compare this to the front of an MDX, an Acura MDX, this definitely is much more bold. And this is a little bit larger SUV. Even though they're both midsize, this is a little bit larger SUV compared to the Acura MDX. Now, as we rise up, we have that Lexus badge looking good. I like the way the aluminum style finish matches the trim on the front. And then you have a bold hood, but it actually is pretty clean. It rises up and then it plateaus into this clean bulge and then the body lines go right towards the A-pillars. Very nice with that metallic ruby red. It's almost like Dorothy's ruby red slippers. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Maybe if I do that inside the Lexus, it'll take me right home. Probably. Now, as I come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So what you're going to notice, we have these sort of like gunmetal metallic gray multi-spoke wheels, 20 inch wheel, 255 in the width, 55 series sidewall, and we have all wheel drive. Now, one of my favorite things, painted all the way around. No flat black, they got rid of that. Like the way it's nicely painted, especially the Matador Red. This color is really beautiful. This is front wheel drive base, but it does send power, of course, to the rear wheels. So that's another thing to think about with how this chassis is developed. And this is essentially the sister vehicle to the Toyota Grand Highlander. Now, as we come down the side, what do we got going on? Color match on the mirror caps, a little bit of shiny chrome finish, LED lighting, turn signals built in. You're gonna have super flush roof rails, which you could get your crossbars. And then I like the way they just did the bright, shiny metal work only on the top of the window frames, not on the bottom. Door handles are not really handles. You could pull on them, but they don't do anything. What you have to do is you push a button and that's how the door opens. So something to think about. Don't run up to somebody's 
TX and just try to rip, rip it because the door handle might rip off in your hand. You actually have to hit a button and that allows the door to open. A little bit of gloss black, color match, everything else is beautiful color match. And then this is really where you see how much larger this vehicle is. Check out the size of the quarter window, much larger than what's on an RX. And they did something, I think, kind of smart. Even though I don't love gloss black, I like the way they did this to just make this area look a little larger. And then you'll see that sort of like steak knife sharpness that comes to the point here on the trim. Now, as we swing around back, Lexus does a great job on lighting and this vehicle is no different. LED brake lights, turn singles, backup lights. The one thing I got a Zonk is this wiper, but it's the same story on the Acura MDX and the Toyota Grand Highlander. They all have exposed wipers, so that needs to go. I'm digging the way they spell out the Lexus name. I don't need the Lexus badge back here. Let me know if you're okay with that. And then as we work our way down, there's your trim badging, the TX350 all-wheel drive, and nothing exposed, nothing fake, nothing exposed, super clean at the back of this vehicle. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and talk horsepower of this new TX. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hydraulic hood struts. Underneath the hood, I hope you're not expecting a V6, because on this particular trim, there is not a V6 to be had. This is going to be your 2.4 turbocharged inline four. So you're looking at 275 horsepower, 317 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to an eight-speed automatic, zero to 60 in about seven seconds. Top speed is governed to 113 miles per hour. MPGs, 21 in the city, 27 on the highway, and the vehicle can tow 5,000 pounds. Now, you're gonna have a similar engine setup. You actually get that max setup on the Grand Highlander, that hybrid setup. You can go hybrid with this as well, even plug-in hybrid. But if you go MDX, it's real simple. Naturally aspirated V6 paired to a 10-speed automatic with all-wheel drive. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire this thing up and see it move. Alright guys, we are inside this 2024 Lexus TX350 all-wheel drive. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I'm liking this TX, but I also like the MDX. How much is this one? So the way this one is optioned with the all-wheel drive, you're looking at an MSRP of $56,800. Let's see how it stacks up to the Acura MDX to the door panels. I love the two-tone style. Really digging that lighter off-white with the soft touch that's black. You have some nice white contrast stitching, no gloss black. That silver is where you're gonna hit the button right there where the silver trim is, and that's gonna open up the door for you. And door pocket is kinda on the tight side, so maybe two beef and cheddars from Arby's, no curly fries, which is a bummer, and a Mountain Dew to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, I do like the way they bring the two-tone into the actual dash, all soft touch material, a little bit of gray, metallic gray finish, and then guess what? You have this ginormous infotainment system. So that's gonna be 14-inch infotainment system. It's got the new Lexus multimedia software. Easy to use. You can set up your different driver preferences, pull up all your driving history. There's where you're gonna put your uh, different preferences depending on who's driving and all your information transfers over. So your radio, presets, stuff on your phone, music wise, all of that. Dual climate with some real knobs, real volume knob. The only thing you have to adjust AC wise without a knob is on the screen here, but I do like the way you could just hit plus and minus or you could slide it. They do give you the choice. If we go back in to car settings here, you could see how we could clear out the data for all that graph information. Very simple to do. Throw it into reverse. There's our backup camera. Super clear resolution. And I love the nice trajectory. 
put it right back in the park. You got two stages of heated steering wheel, and this one just has heated seats, three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats on this trim. Down below are AC vents, wireless charging, and a place for, I would say, seven pieces of Bazooka Joe, and you're gonna need it because that gum lasts about two seconds with the flavor. But the nice thing is you could slide it open, even with your phone on it, and you have a 12 volt and a nice felt lined area. So this is where you could put some of those special things that you like to drive around with. Maybe your old Star Wars figures, maybe Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, some stormtroopers. If you have the original stuff from the 70s and 80s, that stuff is worth money. Two cup holders, and the great news is, is you can actually remove them if you want to, if you don't like these cup holders. And they are square, so you can get your square boxes of juice, maybe even like a little carton of milk, some chocolate milk. This is gonna control that eight-speed automatic. I like the nice smooth touch material. Soft, super soft on the armrest, and I like the way that they shape this center console armrest. One, two, buckle your shoe, three, four, reach down in, and you could get some more. What do we have? More space, all felt line. So if you wanna maybe keep some of those things, maybe you have your uh, girlfriend's class ring that you dated back in high school and you just can't let it go. Like you can't let go of that time that she dumped you for that college guy. You could keep that ring in here and uh, hopefully if you're married, they never find it. If they do, that's on you, that's not on me. Seats. I love the new Lux material, that off-white finish, perforated, nice bolstering, power assist for the passenger, power assist for the driver. This one, even at $56,000, no sunroof. That's a little bit of a bummer to me. But why don't you come over here? I'm gonna cheer you up. If you're bummed out like I am, I'm gonna cheer you up because I got some nice things to show you on the business side coming over. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. You do have all your power seat settings. Easy to get to, which is really nice. I'm sitting here, it feels great. These seats kind of really just like, almost like cuddle me. They just like totally hold me the way I want to be held. That's what I'm feeling right now in this Matador Red TX. Feels good. Six feet tall, plenty of room. Steering wheel, nice leather all the way around. Some simulated stitching. You do have paddles on the back of the steering wheel to go up and down the eight speed automatic, and it is a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then of course you have your digital gauge cluster there. Lots of good information, clean readout. I could scroll down and get a cornucopia. You could even get a boost gauge ready for fast and the furious, or maybe too fast, too furious with that boost gauge. It even has a G meter. Why is that even there? It is, and I'm okay with it, but it is kind of funny. So nice to have that information. This trim does not have a head-up display, so just something to throw out there, but let's get into the mid-row and the third row and see if this should be your next luxury SUV. All right, guys, mid-row time, and just like the seats up front, very, very comfortable. Of course, you can sit three across, which is really nice. You have large pockets. Easily get a real deal New York calzone in there, and there's a place up the street from where we're located right now. If you go there, it's called Joey's. No, it's not mine but there's a place, New York style pizza and calzones. Ask them for the Radies Ride special. They will hook you up, but you can fit a nice piping hot calzone in there. Little command center. I do like the way I have my own AC controls back here in the back seat area. You got two USB-Cs and a place to hold a hot pocket. And then I have my own pocket here so I could get a couple slices of Joey's New York style, the kind where you have to fold it three times to get it in your mouth. I love that pizza. Look at that, little bit of a recline, little bit of a recline. What else we got? We got anything else here? Oh yeah, she slides, I like that. And then you also have, I would say a mild to medium on the softness, but the two cup holders. But we're gonna do this all in one shot, watch this. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. You push the button here, and that's gonna make the seat move forward. Now what I'm gonna do is, this is where it gets complicated. Woo, look at this. Yeah, check out the real estate. They put a nice loading area, all hard plastic for your kids' feet so they don't rip up the nice carpet in here. 
and then I'm going to go ahead and slide on in. Now, you might look at me first and say, Joe, you look pretty uncomfortable. I am sitting very upright, but watch this. Actual seats that recline back. Here, I'll move this one to give you an idea. And I like the way the bottom kind of comes out. More room back here than what you're going to find in Acura MDX. Guaranteed. USB-Cs, cup holders, places to put all your snacks, good and plenty. I mean, Skittles, whatever you got. We got the storage. And I like the way they have nice soft armrests. AC vents, lots of room. It's crazy that they were able to pull this off. But why don't we see how much cargo room there is? Because I want to take you for a spin in this TX. All right, guys, time to get in the cargo area. I love the way X marks the spot. You hit the button. Nice electric assist. You're actually going to be greeted to a very generous 20 cubic feet of space with the third row up. To put the third row down, that's it. It doesn't get any easier in this world to get seats to fold down. And you'll also notice, I like the way they give a soft armrest for that third row. And then on the driver's side, you could see where that USB-C is, right where the handle, the top of the handle, very smart placement for the third row. And then do we have some storage? Of course, but it is very minimal. You could probably put, I would say, 12 packages of Reese's Pieces buttercups back here. I love peanut butter cups. Love those things. Fill it up right there and you're good to go. But you know what? I want to go for a spin and I'm waiting for this to close. There it goes. Nice electric assist. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle and see how this TX350 drives. All right, guys, we are inside this Matador Red 2024 Lexus TX350. I'm actually going to come to a complete stop. Nobody's behind us to show off the all-wheel drive and the acceleration. Are you ready? On oh, throttle. Here we go. So definitely getting the power to the ground very effectively. And you know what? The 2.4-liter uh, turbocharged engine is actually pretty peppy. It's got 275 horsepower. It really bo builds boost very quickly. And the shifts from the eight speed, it seems to really be geared nicely to get you off and running. Now, there is no substitute for a naturally aspirated V6. Let's, let's be real. It's got more torque and the torque comes in lower through the rev range. But the one thing is at the end of the day, there's less weight hanging off the front of this TX compared to the Acura MDX. But going down the road, I love this massive infotainment system screen, especially the way it's not just like plastered on. There's actually a little bit of design thought through it. Getting to the AC controls. One of the things that, like I said, I'm going to point out again is to adjust the blower fan speed. It's real simple because you don't have to drag your finger. Now going into this turn, obviously some body roll, but still, here we go, on throttle. The engine isn't too buzzy, and I'm so proud of Lexus for not pumping in some type of fake noise into the cabin like they do with some of their other models, because I just want it, if it's a four cylinder, I'm okay with that. Let me just hear that. I don't want to hear any other electronic gizmo noises to make it sound like something else. But going down the road, even with the 20 inch wheels, very smooth, very comfortable, very compliant. And I think that's another thing you're gonna like is just how easy it is to drive this vehicle. But at the end of the day, it comes down to, do you want a better sportier driving experience? And you can see how the windshield wipers work very easily. Or do you want more room? This does not have this as sporty a driving experience as the MDX. Let's just be honest. The MDX is a little smaller, the MDX is designed a little bit more for handling, but this has more room. So it's one of those things where you're going to have to get behind the wheel of both, but obviously I want to try to bring them to you. And I'll leave a review of an Acura MDX at the end of this one to give you a nice back-to-back -back comparison. But like I said, driving the vehicle, it's very, very comfortable. It's easy to drive in traffic, 
It's even easy to park because the clarity of the backup camera, I mean, it's clear as day. And super smooth. That's another thing that's really nice. But brakes work great. And I love the visibility, especially out the front. Visibility is wonderful. Out the back, it's nice. You got all of the Lexus safety features that have been upgraded for this model year. On throttle, here we go. So like I said, the shifting is very smooth, very nicely done. It is, like I said, a traditional torque converter transmission, eight-speed automatic torque converter transmission. What I'm gonna do is you take the little shift nub and you pull back on it to put it in manual shift mode. I'm gonna use the paddles, which are a good size behind the wheel and will allow me to go up and down the eight-speed automatic at will. If you go with an Acura MDX, that has a 10-speed automatic, nice large gear indicator. You ready? On oh, throttle, here we go. All-wheel drive, getting us going, getting the power to the ground. On the brakes, here we go. It's right-hand turn here. Nice. It is great to see that they did put some good driving dynamics into this vehicle, and that allows you to kind of enjoy the act of driving just a little bit more. Especially when things get twisty or you got to do some maneuvering. I think with the vehicle, it actually maneuvers quite well, but still not as well as an Acura MDX. Infotainment system wise, I know everybody and their mother wants a touch screen. You get it in this vehicle. In an Acura MDX, you don't get a touch screen. You got to use the touchpad interface. And I tell you, man, it's got pep. Don't think that because this has a four banger underneath the hood, it's slow. It's got some pretty good pep to it, especially with it being a little bit larger than the MDX. But I'm hoping that this has been a good, interesting, not dull kind of drive. It definitely wasn't dull for me. We're going to get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I will see you in a split second. All right, guys, been another great day in so many ways with this Lexus TX350. I definitely got to thank everybody at Lexus for getting us access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. If you want luxury, if you want room, but you also want a good driving experience, are you going with the TX350 or are you going to go with an MDX from Acura or are you going to go totally different and just get yourself a Toyota Grand Highlander? Let me know down in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel, you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raised Rights family. Gotta give it up to Stephen Flood. Check him out on Instagram. He wants, he needs some more likes on his photos because you know what? They're good photos. If they were crappy photos, that would be the end result, but they're good photos. So check them out on Instagram, S Flood Photo. So simple. Thank you, Stephen, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.